Hey there everyone, my name is Nam Pham and in this video I'll be installing the camera. So what I've got here is a CADEX FPV Rattel 2 and I chose this camera based off the video image quality uh, in the reviews online. So here is the camera, nice and small. Uh, it does come with a mount but we're not going to use that because the frame itself comes with a camera mount that we'll be using. And it also comes with a control board as well, so you can wire up the uh, control board to the camera directly and adjust some of the settings. So we might use that later. I'll put it back in. Underneath all of this, we do have a packet of wires and screws that we can use. So we'll be using some of them. Get the box out of the way and let's have a look. So, here we have a wire harness for the camera. I believe this is for the control board. I won't be using the control board for now, so I'll put that aside. Here are a fair few different sizes of the screws that we can use, and here is a wire harness. All right. A few washers are provided as well. And I believe that's so that we can Put them in here and space them so that they can tighten properly onto the frame. It also comes with this uh, Allen key, the hex driver, so that you can drive these in as well. So just looking at the frame's camera mount, I'm just going to test it out to find out which screw size might work best. So we do have this, which is one of the smaller ones of the screws. There's even a smaller one there. I might try the small, the shortest one. I think that one's a bit too small if we're going to be putting the washers in. So I might stick with these ones. So let's give that a try. Put that on in there. And there's a little bit of the thread that's coming through that we can use to screw onto the camera. So this side of the camera mount goes onto this side of the camera. So we can put it on. There is a hole there for the thread. We'll put that on and use the Allen key to tighten it. It's gonna be a bit tricky, but let's give it a go. All right, so that's kind of held on, just not too tight, just enough to hold it for now, so we can get the other side in. So let's try the other side. I didn't, I didn't choose the well, identify which one it was, but I can find out by process of elimination which one it is. So I think it's this one here. Put the washer in and it will go into the camera mount that way. So I'll put this one in there, put the washer on this side as well and place it on top carefully so that the washer doesn't come out. And screw this one in. All right, so that's in just lightly make it a bit firmer all right so we can wiggle that a little bit and adjust the camera angle all right so now that we have that on move these out of the way and get the frame in all right so this is the front of the quad this is the rear of course and there are these two holes here that allow for the camera mount legs to go inside so it goes in like this and they go in quite snugly just turn it around just so I can see it a bit better so 
So I think the washers are taking up too much of that room. So I might have to take them out. So that's one side down. I'll let this camera cover on. Put this one back on without that washer. On this side as well. Take that out, get the washer out, put it back on. Alright, let's give that another go. So these are the two washers that were on the inside between the camera mount and the camera. So let's try that again. And, oh, hang on, let's have a look on the side angle, that's in, and that side's in as well. Alright, so I think that's the best way that this is going to fit. And I'll just turn it on its side so you can see how it goes in. So, you'll see that the legs go in there, and on this side as well. So while we're building this frame and putting the camera in, it's not really going to hold in and wobble out, but the camera does have a uh, plug for the three pins, a JST, that allows you to wire it up here and disconnect it when we need to. So that's going to be handy. Uh, so we don't have to have the camera dangling everywhere and we can just disconnect it. So for now, we'll leave it on while we work on it and plug this connector in, this wire harness. So. This goes in only one direction, so let's give it a go. All right, so I'm back again, and it just needed it a bit more force to get in. This one's very snug in there, uh, but it is the right way, and it is in quite firmly. So we ha now have that in. So I'm just going to tighten this up again because it's coming loose while I was trying to get that in. We can adjust the angles and everything a bit later. All right, so we do have that in. So the camera is going to be sitting here and we just need to wire it up, make sure that we do have enough wire and slack to solder them on. All right, so I'm just going to give it about that much room right there. I think that should be okay. Taking that off. And now we have these three wires. All right, so now we're going to solder these in. Now, before I show that on here, here's a diagram of the flight controller and some of the wiring um, that I've drawn on here that uh, helps us make things easy. So on the left-hand side, you have the video transmitter. On the right, we have the radio receiver. And at the top there, we have the camera. So the camera has the three wires, as you saw before. Um, and going from left to right, you have the video in. Uh, from the camera, it comes from the signal wire, which is yellow, the middle wire, which is red, uh, power, of course, and then the ground wire, which is black. Uh, you also notice that there is three pads here that are provided by the flight controller, which goes to the regulator for power. So this one, it has a 9-volt regulator and a 5-volt regulator. So these three pads need to be bridged the right way so that we can choose the right voltage. In this case, I'll be using the 5 volt regulator. So I'll be bridging the middle pad there uh, to the one on the right. Um, so you'll see me do that in a second, um, which uh, I'll probably get onto right now. So let's start doing that. I'll uh, get the camera and the wires out of the way for now, just so I can solder on or solder the pads for the 5 volt regulator. 
All right, so you'll see that here. Actually, before I do, I'll point it out for you. So this is the front of the flight controller, and you'll see that there's a five volt regulator here and the nine volt regulator here. So there's the three pads. We'll be soldering this pad and this pad together. So just to make things a bit cleaner. So this flux will help. I'll add a bit there on the two pads. I may as well add it to the three pads for the camera as well. There you go. All right, so we go. So the five volt pad on this side, applying a bit of heat on there, get the solder onto the pad and they should bridge quite easily. Add a bit more until they bridge. And there we go, we do have a nice clean bridge now. And now we can get onto the wires of the camera. So these standoffs are going to be in the way. I'll just take them off temporarily. And get that camera back in, just so we can see that the right distances are going to be met. There we go. All right, so as mentioned in the diagram, the yellow wire is gonna to go to the video in power red going into the middle and also the ground going into sorry I'll get it out of the way to this ground here so video in yellow red and then black trim a bit off I'm only going to be taking about two millimeters off this as you can see there may as well do it to the other ones as well Alright, so I'm going to tin the wires now and I'm using these reverse action tweezers that I've gotten now. Just rest it on there, maybe not. I'm going to hold it on the side and I can tin the wires. All right, so I'll have to tin the pads as well. We'll get these out of the way. So add a bit more flux to that. Tin the pads. Ground one is a bit harder, takes some time, but we'll get there. There you go. I'm going to turn it to its side here and I'll start with the ground wire first actually, just so that as I progress across to the left, my soldering iron has room to get in. So I'll use these tweezers to hold that. And hold that to the ground right there so let's see clean the tip a bit there we go all right so ground is on So just a visual inspection to make sure the soldering joint's clean. I think the power one is not clean, there's not enough solder on there. I might add a bit more. Might be a bit hard actually, so I'm going to take it off.
add a bit more to the pad. Just so we have a really good connection. All right now, bring it back in. And solder it back on. All right. Okay, I think that's a better connection now. And there you go. So the camera is now soldered in. And one thing that we can do to make it nice and neat is turn it around like this. And I learned this from Joshua Bardwell. And I think a lot of other guys do it as well, but I see it a lot in his videos. So that kind of helps with making it a little bit neater, keeping them together and it will sit inside the frame like that. So there you go. So that's the camera installation. I hope you liked or learned something from that. Um, yeah, I'll put the camera link in the description below. Leave any comments or questions that you have uh, for me and I'll try and get to them. And uh, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching.